Hello, my name is Dr. Jane Dickerson. I'm a co-director of the Chemistry Lab at Seattle Children's Hospital and a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Lab Medicine at the University of Washington. Welcome to this discussion on the diagnosis of fear chromocytomas. Fear chromocytomas are a rare type of adrenal tumor of the medullary chromaffin cells. These cells produce catecholamine. Catecholamine-producing tumors, like fear chromocytomas, cause excessive secretion of catecholamines, which lead to serious health consequences. 85% of these tumors are located within the adrenal gland. The remaining 15% of catecholamine-secreting tumors are located outside the adrenal gland, and these are known as paragangliomas. When we talk about catecholamine, we are really referring to epinephrine and norepinephrine. Collectively, they are known as catecholamines because they contain a catechol group, shown here. They are normally synthesized in the medulla of the adrenal gland. These compounds play an important role in the fight-or-flight response because they trigger a rise in blood glucose, more energy for the fight-or-flight, and blood pressure. Pheochromocytomas get their name from their unique staining when exposed to chromium salts. They turn brown, as shown here in this image. Pheo, meaning dark color, and chroma, from the chromium salts. Patients with pheochromocytoma can present with a variety of signs and symptoms. The classic presentation is known as the triad, which includes sweating, palpitations, and headache. Most patients do not actually present initially with the triad, but hypertension, along with abdominal pain, lack of color, and an impending sense of doom or feelings of panic. These symptoms can be transient, making the diagnosis difficult. Other less common symptoms include visual blurring, papilledema, which is swelling of the optic disc, weight loss, hyperglycemia, polyuria, and polydipsia. Pheochromocytomas are described as very rare neoplasms. The exact incidence is not known because it is likely underdiagnosed, but it is estimated at 0.8 in 100,000 people and 0.2% in those with hypertension. The majority of pheochromocytomas occur in the abdomen and 80 to 85% in the adrenal gland itself. Pheochromocytomas which occur outside of the adrenal gland are more accurately described as catecholamine-secreting paragangliomas although pheochromocytoma is commonly used to refer to any catecholamine-secreting tumor. Between 25 and 30 percent of pheochromocytomas are associated with a familial syndrome. Familial cases present with bilateral tumors in more than 10 percent of cases and are associated with higher rate of malignancy. Sporadic cases present bilaterally less than 10 percent of cases and are rarely associated with malignancy. The prognosis and treatment of these tumors is optimistic for non-malignant tumors. The therapy is removal or resection of the tumor. There is risk associated with the operation, but this can be mitigated by preoperative therapy. There are three accepted preoperative therapies, and there is no consensus as to which one is best. The combined treatment with alpha and beta adrenergic blockade is aimed at preventing a dangerous hypertensive event during the operation. The patient is treated first with alpha adrenergic blocker two weeks before the operation, followed by addition of a beta adrenergic blocker two to three days prior. Calcium channel blockers have also been used as successful preoperative therapy in patients who experience intolerable side effects to the alpha adrenergic blockers. Finally, metyrosine is used as a last resort option when the other therapies have failed. Metyrosine is an inhibitor of catecholamine synthesis but should be used with caution due to its serious and disabling side effects. For pheochromocytomas that occur intraadrenally, adrenalectomy is the best surgical option, removal of the entire gland, for sporadic or non-hereditary cases. Malignant pheochromocytomas are also treated surgically, although there is no guarantee of complete cure. The five-year survival rate is less than 50% for malignant cases due to recurrence of the tumor.
While the majority of pheochromocytomas are sporadic, between 25 and 30 percent of cases are associated with a familial disorder. The inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant, and there are several known hereditary disorders associated with pheochromocytoma. These include von Hippel-Lindau type 2, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2, also known as MEN2, and neurofibromatosis type 1. In addition, mutations in the succinate dehydrogenase complex have been associated with a predisposition to develop pheochromocytoma. From a laboratory standpoint, the profile of catecholamine excretion can be unique with these mutations, notable for increases in dopamine. There are several other genes which have also been associated with a predisposition for developing pheochromocytomas, and they are listed here. Of the hereditary syndromes, pheochromocytomas are most common in MEN2, occurring in 50% of affected individuals. It is caused by a gain-of-function mutation in the RET proto-oncogene. 100% of affected individuals will develop medullary thyroid carcinoma, and half will go on to develop pheochromocytoma. In these cases, pheochromocytoma is treated by resection of the affected adrenal gland or complete bilateral adrenalectomy if indicated. Another surgical option which is often attempted in hereditary bilateral pheochromocytoma and especially MEN2 due to the low metastatic risk is partial adrenalectomy. This is the complete removal of one gland and partial removal of the second gland in an attempt to retain some adrenocortical function. Pheochromocytomas are actually rarely diagnosed because of the low prevalence of the condition. One study estimated that 1 in 300 cases being worked up for pheochromocytoma were positive for the disease. The main diagnostic criteria are elevated urinary catecholamines and metanephrine, or plasma-free metanephrine. Metanephrine and normetanephrine are the metabolites of the catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Catecholamines and metanephrines are now frequently measured by HPLC or HPLC tandem mass spectrometry. 24-hour urine fractionated catecholamines and metanephrines include epinephrine, norepinephrine, and the metabolites metanephrine and normetanephrine. Creatinine is also frequently measured to make sure that the sample is appropriate, that is, not too dilute or concentrated. Proper collection of these specimens is important for a reliable measurement, but complete collection is challenging in the outpatient setting. Plasma-free metanephrines, and free refers to non-sulfated metanephrines, can be a more attractive option for diagnosis of pheochromocytomas. The metabolites of epinephrine and norepinephrine are produced continuously in the plasma by metabolism of catecholamine and are independent of variations in catecholamine release by the pheochromocytoma. Catecholamines and metanephrines can both be measured in urine, but only the metanephrines are recommended to measure in plasma. This is because catecholamines are highly labile compounds and are acutely increased in times of stress and pain. The experience of phlebotomy itself can cause a rise in plasma catecholamines, and so collection is cumbersome. The room must be dark and quiet. A butterfly needle is inserted and flushed with heparin to prevent coagulation. Then the patient is allowed to rest and recover from the poke before blood is collected in a chilled green top tube. The sample must be centrifuged almost immediately and frozen within an hour to prevent metabolism of the catecholamine. For all of these reasons, Plasma catecholamines are no longer recommended for screening of pheochromocytomas. There is still conversation around what is the best test to diagnose catecholamine-secreting tumors, urine catecholamines, urine metanephrines, or plasma metanephrines. Several studies have investigated the sensitivities and specificities of these measurements. But the most commonly cited study from 2002 is summarized in this table. Sensitivities and specificities were calculated separately for sporadic and hereditary cases. 
The most sensitive methods are plasma and urine metanephrines, followed by urine catecholamines. Specificity is highest in plasma metanephrines and urine catecholamines. Because the sensitivities and specificities are similar, some guidelines suggest screening with plasma metanephrines because you can avoid a 24-hour urine collection. Other guidelines based on a few other studies recommend screening with 24-hour urine catecholamines in patients with a lower likelihood of disease. Other tests can be used to support diagnosis of a pheochromocytoma. The clonidine suppression test is used to confirm mild increases in plasma catecholamines or metanephrines. Clonidine, a centrally acting alpha adrenergic agonist, normally suppresses catecholamine synthesis, but has no effect on catecholamines produced in a pheochromocytoma. A baseline measurement of plasma catecholamines, norepinephrine, and blood pressure are obtained, and then again three hours after treatment with clonidine. In a patient without pheochromocytoma, the blood pressure and plasma norepinephrine should decline. Chromogranin A is increased in 80% of pheochromocytoma cases and can be used as additional testing to support diagnosis, although its specificity is low. It is measured with immunochemical techniques. Finally, vanilla mandelic acid, VMA, can also be measured. VMA is a metabolite of metanephrine and norepinephrine. However, 24-hour urine VMA has poor sensitivity and specificity when compared with urine or plasma metanephrine. Genetic testing can be pursued to confirm familial pheochromocytoma. There are more than 10 genes associated which can be analyzed clinically. The utility of genetic testing in every patient is debatable since the majority of pheochromocytomas are sporadic. Currently, there is no consensus regarding the best screening approach. Some guidelines say genetic testing should be considered in patients who have a paraganglioma, bilateral pheochromocytoma, unilateral pheochromocytoma but with a positive family history, and unilateral pheochromocytoma occurring at a young age, less than 45 years old. While panels exist, a sequential approach is recommended due to the cost of these tests. Depending on the presentation, there are guidelines for the best sequential approach and should be prioritized based on age, tumor location, multifocal disease, the presence of other syndromic features, and biochemical phenotype. In summary, pheochromocytomas are rare catecholamine-secreting neoplasms occurring sporadically in 70% of cases. Diagnostic criteria include increases in plasma and urine metanephrines and urine catecholamines. These tests have comparable sensitivities and specificities, but plasma-free metanephrines offer the convenience of a single draw rather than a cumbersome 24-hour urine collection. Screening with plasma catecholamines is not recommended.